Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. This is a joint work with my graduate students, Yi Hao Liu, Kai Huang, Xin Zhe Song, and Bo Yan Yang. Stylus pen nowadays has been widely used as an input method on today's mobile devices, such as smartphones, tablets, and laptops. There are many major brands from manufacturers such as Microsoft and Apple, and also many third-party providers that produce stylus pen products with lower prices. As you can see, people can write letters that can be directly recognized and translated into text, and they can also freely draw their designs and present them to others on the LCD screen. However, this convenient input method also brings a new interesting yet important security vulnerability that allows the attacker to remotely eavesdrop the mobile user's handwriting inputs. The main reason of this vulnerability comes from the stylus pen's internal magnet that helps the pen to adhere as accessory to the mobile device. This magnet will automatically change the magnetic field in the surroundings. So if we have a nearby attacking device with a digital magnetometer, such fluctuation of the magnetic field when the user handwrites and moves the stylus pen could be timely captured by the nearby magnetometer, and such magnetic sensing data can then be used and analyzed to infer the user's handwriting. This new type of eavesdropping attack has many unique characteristics. First, this eavesdropping is highly accurate. The magnetic field is known to be consistent against most types of external disturbances. So compared with other existing approaches that infer handwriting from either the audible writing sound or the disturbance of the wireless signals, such magnetic sensing is much more reliable and resistant against different types of external disturbances, such as the impact of ambient noise and wireless interference. Second, this attack can be easily launched but only based on the readings from a single magnetometer. So being different from existing work that uses multiple custom magnetometers, the attacker, attacker can easily launch this attack with most of the commodity mobile devices, such as smartphones, smartwatches, and wristbands that are widely equipped with digital magnetometers. So in this way, this attack can be launched with very low cost to the attacker. Third, this attack, this attack could be highly covert and hard to be detected because it can be launched from remote and from the attacker's own device so that the attacker doesn't have to hack into the victim's device. Since the magnetic field has good penetration against the most type of materials such as wood, plastic, and fabric, the attacking device doesn't require any line of sight to the victim and can be easily concealed within a short distance from the victim. Based on these characteristics, this eavesdropping attack could be practically launched in many scenarios to eavesdrop the victim's sensitive data when being inputted via handwriting, especially in crowded public spaces where multiple people have to share the same space. Typical examples of these scenarios widely range from the airport terminals, public transports, to restaurants and public libraries, in which an attacker can conceal an eavesdropping device within the victim's physical proximity without being noticed. So in this work, we developed MacHacker, which is a new sensing system that realizes such eavesdropping attack on commodity mobile devices. And more specifically, we focus on recognizing the handwritten English letters and words. MacHacker takes the raw 3D readings from the magnetometer as an input, but as you can see here, the 3D trajectory of such magnetometer readings are usually highly distorted and hard to be directly recognized. To solve this problem, MacHacker generally takes us three steps. First, it segments such continuous reading into small segments, so that each segment corresponds to an individual English letter. Afterwards, so each segment is individually translated to 2D writing trajectory via projection and coordinate transformation. And as you can see here, after such process, the 2D trajectory will be much more recognizable. And eventually, the 2D trajectories will be sent to a convolutional neural network for letter recognition. So over here, the first step is to segment the continuous magnetometer readings into segments. And the most intuitive question we're going to first ask here is, does writing eight different English words and letters take the same amount of time? If so, then the simplest method of segmentation will be directly using such duration of writing to decide each segment. 
However, our preliminary experiments over four student volunteers, as you can see here, shows that no matter whether different people write the same letter or the same person write different letters, the duration of writing one letter is always highly heterogeneous, and such a variation of writing duration could be up to 70%. In this case, we will have to find out some other characteristics from humans' handwriting patterns for segmentation. To find such characteristics for segmentation, in MacHacker, we focus on the speed of humans' hand movement in handwriting. And we find out that such speed is highly fluctuating when you write letters. More specifically, we find out that such writing speed usually increases when people are drawing continuous strokes in letters, such as those long strokes when writing letter M and A in this example. And on the other hand, such writing speed will significantly drop on turning points in writing. Based on such characteristics, we use the frequency of writing speed changes as the criteria for segmentation. In English, writing each letter usually takes two to five strikes, and the writing will switch regularly between continuous strokes and the turning points for several times. This frequency of change will hence be higher when you write letters and will be much lower when you transit between letters and words, because the writing speed in transition will be nearly constant. So in MacHacker, what we do is that we first convert the raw 3D magnetometer readings into the speed of change of these readings by doing differentiation over the time series data of these readings. Then we apply continuous wavelet transform on the speed of change and analyze the produced spectrogram. For example, in this spectrogram corresponding of writing two letters O and U, you can clearly see that there are two distinct highlighted areas indicating the segment with more frequent changes of the writing speed. Then one intuitive approach is to decide the boundary of these two segments as the highest gradient in the spectrum from the center of these highlighted areas. But the problem of this approach is that the gradient may only cover some of the frequency components in the spectrum, but not all of them. Instead, what we do is that for every time in this spectrogram, we take a snapshot by summing up all the frequency components and produce a time series data from the spectrum. In this time series, the point of highest derivatives will then be used as the boundary of two letters. So over here, you can see that the period between the two boundaries will be the transition between the two letters. And in practice, we observe that such transition is much longer between two words, and we're going to use such difference in transition lengths to also decide the boundary between different words. After segmentation, our next job is to convert the magnetometer readings in one segment to the recognizable trajectory of handwriting. So from the previous slide, you can see that such raw 3D trajectory directly drawn from the magnetometer readings are usually highly distorted and hard to be recognized. The key reason for such distortion is that the magnetometer reading are not only determined by the stylus pen's movement, but are also related to the pen magnet's relative positioning and orientation from the magnetometer itself. So for example, as we can see here, when the magnetometer is being placed at different positions with different orientations with respect to the magnet, the same handwriting trajectory may be actually reflected into totally different magnetometer readings. And when we write a straight line, the actual handwriting trajectory may be reflected as a highly curvy trajectory in the magnetometer readings. So to address this distortion and make sure that the trajectory of magnetometer reading is correctly converted into recognizable writing trajectories, MacHacker's key approach is to find the most appropriate 2D plane to project the 3D magnetometer readings, so that the projected 2D trajectory could be recognizable with the minimum distortion. The most intuitive 2D plane to be used in this case is the BX-BY plane in the magnetometer's coordinate system. But as you can see here, the projected 2D trajectory in this case is still largely distorted. The key reason here is the difference between the magnets and the magnetometer's coordinate systems. So instead, our approach is to find out a 2D plane that best adapts to the 3D trajectory in the 3D space. 
We find these 2D plane by identifying its four vertices with the minimum and maximum values of Bx and By. And as you can see here, this 2D trajectory projected to this plane has much smaller distortion. However, one remaining problem here is that the centroids of the different letters, as shown as the red dots, form a curvy line instead of a straight line in the practical handwriting. And the shapes of each letter may hence be rotated. So this may cause extra difficulty when recognizing these letters. MacHacker solved this problem with custom coordinate transformations that adapts to each individual letter. Our basic approach, as you can see in this example, is to first identify the distorted writing direction of each letter as the tangent line on the letter's centroid. And of that, the coordinate transformation at each letter is individually decided so that this writing direction of this letter could be always restored back to the x-axis. After such transformation, you can see that the difference, different letters in the same word are not aligned along a straight line, and the shape of each letter is also restored. Eventually, the producer trajectory of each individual letter is separately applied to a CNN classifier for recognition. During training, each letter's writing trajectory is converted into a thumbnail and then goes through convolutions twice to get 64 feature maps. As you can see here, the key to accurate recognition is a sufficient amount of training data, especially the training data that covers different writing habits and patterns. Obviously, if we only use the magnetometer readings of the attacker itself, it will be very hard to achieve high recognition accuracy. So instead, besides such magnetometer readings, MacHacker further introduced printed letters with different fonts and online datasets of handwriting letter images for training. So we will see more details about the eavesdropping details and accuracy in the evaluation section. So basically, these three components describe how MacHacker works. And let's see how it performs in practice. We evaluated the MacHacker over uh, five student volunteers in the lab office. And in our experiment, each volunteer is handwriting with a stylus pen over the LCD screen of a tablet. And a smartphone running MacHacker is placed aside for eavesdropping. These volunteers are instructed to write all their possible three-letter combinations such as A, B, C, A, B, D, and etc. In this way, we collected over 10,000 of writing trajectories for evaluation. And then we split these trajectories for training and testing data in a round robin manner, such that each student volunteer will use the other four volunteers' data as training, and then test the training, the trained recognition model over this volunteer's testing data. And all the experimental results eventually are the average over all the five volunteers. So first, let's see the performance of MacHacker's letter segmentation, which is, the, which is the core component that decides the accuracy of Avis drawing. We consider a segmentation as erroneous if it has more than 10% of difference from ideal segmentation. So as you can see, for both lowercase and uppercase letters, the segmentation error is always within 4%, and most of the errors appears in the transition between few letters, especially the transition from letter C. Based on this accurate segmentation, when the eavesdropping distance is 10 cm, MacHacker can generally achieve an accuracy around 75% to 80%. So as you can see here, the recognition errors also concentrate on a few letters, such as the lower J, capital F, and capital V. However, remember that these experiment results are the average over all the possible letter combinations. And in practice, usually people will only write legitimate English words. So based on this fact, we will be able to further use other techniques such as word spell checking to further improve the eavesdropping accuracy. And we further conducted more detailed experiments to investigate the different factors that may affect such accuracy. The eavesdropping distance is the most important factor. So as you can see from this finger, MacHacker can have the maximum performance when the eavesdropping distance is within 10 cm. And when this dis distance increases to 20 cm, the accuracy may drop to 6%. However, as we said before, we can use other techniques such as word spell checking to further improve the accuracy afterwards. And such accuracy could be further improved to 70% in this case. 
The speed of handwriting is another factor that may affect the accuracy. Because when people are writing fast, it's more likely to write irregular letter shapes or do cursive writing. So we tested MacHacker over three types of writing speeds, and you can see it maintains good accuracy for the slow and the normal speed. On the other hand, it experiences some degradation in the fast writing speed. But in practice, this fast speed actually exceeds the normal range of handwriting and only be used when using uh, cursive writing or short typing. So as we stated before, the relative positioning and orientation between the magnet and the magnetometer will distort the magnetometer readings. And so we tested the MacHacker with four different positions and orientation as shown in this picture. The, and we can see that in most of the cases, MacHacker can achieve good performance. The only exception is case A, in which the magnetometer is not in the front side directly facing the magnet. And in this case, because the magnetic field could be partially blocked by the metal frame of the mobile device, there was slight degradation of the eavesdropping accuracy. We also evaluated the power consumption. Since the digital magnetometer is very power efficient, magnetic mag hacker consume very little amount of power. And we examined the power consumption over two different smartphone models. And the power consumption is less than 20% in a continuous use of three hours. So finally, all the above experiments are being done over a using a Microsoft Surface Pen. And furthermore, we also evaluated MacHacker with other two types of stylus pen products on the market. And we find out that MacHacker has very consistent performance over all these products. Based on these results, we conclude that MacHacker can precisely eavesdrop handwriting in different practical scenarios. Besides, there are still some open research questions that we are currently working on. For example, right now, MacHacker is limited to eavesdropping handwriting of English letters, but we can also further expand MacHacker to include numbers and special characters by simply incorporating more training data into the CNN classifier. However, it will be more difficult to recognize continuously curve writing, which has less obvious separation between the letters, and this will be one of our future work. Also, we have been thinking about how this attack could be practically defended in practice. The most effective defense, of course, is to apply magnetic shielding on the stylus pens, but this may, may be practically expensive or increase the pen's weight. Another way is to obfuscate the magnetic field produced by the magnet with another external source, but this may add extra cost to the mobile device. So this would be also an interesting research question that we would like to further explore.